Hi there. I want to talk to you today about good people. We all like to think that we are good people. But what is a good person? It's not a perfect person. None of us is perfect. We all make slips and mistakes. What defines a good person is how they deal with the mistakes that they make and how much effort they put in to making less mistakes in the future. That is what defines a good person. And we can all recognize goodness in other people, whether they be friends or family members. But of course, being good is not enough on its own. As Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Which of course means that anyone who does not embrace Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour is doomed to an eternity of pain and torment in the fires of hell. No matter how good a person they are, even if they have been a better person than you, they will be tortured daily for eternity. Whilst you, who have embraced Jesus Christ, will be back in the Garden of Eden, and there will be no more tears, no more pain, and no more sorrow, as you look down upon your friends and family, being tortured daily and for all eternity. So how can you make sure that your friends and family are looking down towards the fires of hell for all eternity, rather than being down there, tortured in them and looking up? How can you convert atheists? Well, do not start quoting the Old Testament at atheists. They will only point out the factual errors and self-contradictions within the Bible. Or they might start giving you a lecture on cosmology, geology, plate tectonics, archaeology or paleontology. This will not convince atheists to embrace Jesus Christ. And do not start quoting the New Testament at atheists. They will only explain that there are no eyewitness accounts of Jesus in the New Testament or highlight the internal contradictions within the various gospel accounts and the fact that some of the canonical books are known forgeries, or that the New Testament itself was developed over hundreds of years by people arguing over what they thought the Bible said, and that the Nicene Creed of 325, upon which all modern Christian theology is based, is not itself based on the New Testament teachings of Jesus Christ. None of this will draw atheists any closer. And finally, please do not tell atheists that you know Jesus is Lord because of your personal relationship with him. Atheists will merely point out that there are millions of non-Christian believers around the world who have a personal relationship with their own God. No. To convince atheists, it is necessary to get down to specifics and provide them with irrefutable evidence that they can understand and accept. Here are a couple of examples for you, though I'm sure you can find many, many more to arm yourself in the crusade for Christ. Mahatma Gandhi is damned because he followed a modified form of Hinduism. Isaac Newton is damned because though a devout believer in the Christian God, he did not accept the Holy Trinity. Benjamin Franklin is damned for the same reason. Olive Schreiner was anti-war and anti-apartheid, but she was also an atheist and is of course damned, as are many others, including every good Jew, Muslim, Hindu, etc. who ever lived. Regardless of how good they were or what good they did, they are all damned because they did not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. So all you need to do is to explain to the atheists why living a good life and following the ancient golden rule is not good enough? Why the God you believe in has stood by whilst Mahatma Gandhi has spent the last 65 years screaming in torment in the flames of hell? And why he, Gandhi, deserves to spend the rest of eternity suffering exactly the same fate? Simply because he was brought up in another faith and never saw the need to refer to the New Testament when deciding how to be a good human being. Perhaps then you can convince atheists that your God is the kind of being that they would want to worship. But first, of course, you will need to convince them that any being capable of the levels of inhumanity and depravity evident in your Bible is actually capable of existing at all. Thank you for listening.